Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, just recently I was running a live stream where I was showing off the Supernova that's just gone off in M101. Um, I'm sure you're all well aware of that right now. Here's an image of what I captured. But basically, a question cropped up a few times through that live stream. Uh, and it was people wondering how I was running a live stack in SharpCap at the same time as capturing in a completely different program. In my case, it was Nina, but in your case, it could be anything really, uh, whatever you actually choose to do your captures in. So uh, I decided after answering that on stream, I thought if a few people have asked it, probably many more people have that question, uh, but I just chose not to ask it yet. So I wanted to cover it in a separate video for you guys and hopefully help it make a bit of sense and you can use this tool for yourselves on your nights of imaging. So I've got SharpCap open right here. I do have a SharpCap Pro subscription. Um, I don't think you need that for this to be actually available to you, but I could be wrong on that. So all the same anyway, I'm gonna click on cameras and then using the drop down box, I'm just gonna click folder monitor camera. Now in this case, it already knows exactly where to point because I've run this stack before on this PC. In your case, the first time you click this, it's not going to know where to look for the source file. So you must point it to it just using the file browsing system. This doesn't have to be on your local system. By the way, you can actually pull files across the network directly like I was doing for the live stream. But in this case, they are on my local system. So I'm just going to navigate to them. So I'll choose the files from the 21st to the 5th in this case click on one of them. I do want to stack all of them, so I'm not going to have to divide these up into separate folders or anything like that. And you click all fits files. So you're going to get a screen that looks like this, just like you've got a camera connected effectively, only it's not loop and exposures. You instead have a set of controls up here, such as, you know, process frames, <laughs> advanced frames, rewind to the start, that kind of thing. Now I'm going to run a live stack using this. So I'll just open up the live stack tool right now. If you do have some darks and flats that you want to use along with your data, uh, if you want to take a closer look into this live stack, then absolutely by all means use the drop down boxes and load them in. Uh, but in my case, I'm just going to use the lights as they are, uh, as I know that I'm going to stack these up separately later. And this is more just going to be for monitoring and sharing purposes. Now, uh, in my case, I like to make use of the brightness filter. I like to make use of the Sigma clipping stacking option that's in ShapCut Pro. And you do want it to, of course, align your frames. So all that is set up and ready to go. Everything is reset as I'm going to talk you through how this actually works. So at this point, now we're actually ready to hit play. So it's going to start processing those frames. You'll notice it's all washed out. And that's because you can see on the screen, we've got a histogram tool right here. So we can pull across the black level to this main spike on the histogram. We're approaching it. We're starting to stretch things. You're at this point going to want to color balance and start to align those spikes. Keep moving these up until you can isolate out the, the meaty part of the signal that you actually want. I'm going to jump in and take a little bit of a closer look. So here is the M101 image that we were capturing. As you can see, it's processing through frames. It's already ignored two of them. It's stacked 34 of them so far. And with just a little bit of color balance work, a little bit of black point and mid-level sliders, I never would advise touching the white level, really. You blow things out way too easy with that. We've got a nice image on screen appearing right before us, and this can be really useful if you're having an extended imaging session and you want to keep an eye on how things are looking. Effectively, this is a good way to do it. And uh, you can also probably see by this point, there is some red rejected frames using that brightness filtering. So I know that they're bad frames with clouds in them. Um, and it's just a nice way to keep an eye on things and how they progressed throughout a session. Now, uh, I've covered everything I need to there, so I'm not going to go on any longer. And I will just leave it at that and say thank you ever so much to everybody who joined into my live streams. More of those will be coming, by the way. Uh, and that's about it. So look after yourselves, guys. Thank you to everybody for your support. And I will see you in the next one. Glace, guys.